Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting interview for the Content Design Club at BCU. Today we have our esteemed guest, Angela Gear. She is the creative recruiter for Leica Studios. And in case you're not so sure what studio that is, they're the people who, the stop motion animation studio who bought great titles such as Kubo and the Two Strings, Coraline, Box Trolls, and just, if anything cool stop motion, it's probably them. So, Angela, thank you so much for having, for coming here today. I'm so excited. I wish I was there in person. <laughs> um, we wish you were there too, but we can't afford to fly you out. <laughs> we are. Yet. <laughs> Thank God for technology. I know. <laughs> okay. So, um, I guess, how, how many of you, like, can you introduce yourselves? Like, what do you guys do? So, we are, that are, um, we're the club concept designers at VCU, and, um, so usually we meet every Friday, and we uh, we either like have these guest talks, like such as what we're doing right now, or we have like prompts every every so uh, every week, and um, we just kind of set up like fun little things, such as like hey, like turn your favorite fairy tale into like designs, and like take these shapes and try and like turn it into like a prop design, character design, environment design. Or just teaching like each other about like self care with like art, um, soft skills, and like different techniques in like design work. That a lot of stuff you won't learn until like you're either out of school or like you're in your last year. So and also just kind of you know making connections, making friends. So how many of you are concept artists? A lot of people. And, like, visual development. Specialization. Okay. Any TV animators? <laughs> the reason we have TV animation is we're actually right now um, we're about to to put a post up. Um, we're looking for a rough in betweener, kind of like a four story specifically for the story board team. Um, so they do clean up and rough in betweens uh, of the storyboards. So, if anyone is interested, um, please watch for that on our website. So, and we're looking for somebody, you know, that's talented but very junior and um, can come in and, and help us out. When are you guys graduating? How many of you are seniors, juniors? Um, Junior hands for seniors. We're seniors? Yeah. Now juniors? Juniors. Sophomores? Sophomores? Any when are you guys, um, when are the seniors graduating? graduating? Spring. Spring. Yeah, spring. Uh, May 2019. Do we have any December grads in here? Okay. Well, we don't have any December grads with us right now, but uh, the seniors here are graduating in May 2019. Okay. okay. Um, so, <laughs> I guess for you guys, uh, we accept interns um, every summer. You have to be a junior or a senior to qualify. Um, that does not mean that you can't submit your work as a sophomore, um, because you know if we like what we see, we'll track you for future positions. We actually had somebody. Well, there's quite a few interns that that's happened to where we met them in their freshman or sophomore year and followed them through their junior and senior year, and they've applied, you know, multiple times for internships, but um, didn't quite make the cut until their senior year, and they finally got it, and now they're going to be, you know, trainees and juniors here. Um, we had that done, actually, our... Uh, Real development person in the art department, and then Nielsen um, was an intern, and she, I think, interned for like model shop. They ended up loving her work, her work, her stylized uh, drawings and everything. So now she's in the visual development department, which is really cool. Um, so I guess I don't know really where to go with this. What do you guys? Do you have any questions specifically for me, or do you want me to tell you guys just about kind of what it's like to work at Leica? Um, Let's start off with that. Yeah. Um, day in the life of uh, someone typically working at Leica. Well, I have the best job. Um, <laughs> Leica is amazing. Um, the culture here is super casual. It's a very flat organization, so there's not a hierarchy. Um, 
and it's like just a one big giant family. Uh, the cool thing is about animation, and since we own our own content, you know, these films are super long, so you have people coming in or pages. <laughs> Um, and you develop these amazing relationships through the entire show. There's also a lot of people that have been here since Coraline, you know, like 10, 15 years, um, and even before that, the Mitten Studios, which is really cool. Um, so you have, I mean, so I think that kind of creates the core of how it is to work at Leica. So many people have been here for so long. Um, and we just have really cool benefits as far as uh, the day to day. So there's uh, ultimate frisbee, the main game of courseware that goes on every day at lunch. We have the yoga instructors that we bring in for people to do yoga during lunch for an hour, um, a couple times a week. We have a naturopath on site. We have basketball hoops. And, um, we have a gym. Now we're getting ready to move into a new building with a gym. Um, and we have a lot of craft fairs for people to share their own work because I know it kind of gets a little old when we're working on other people's stuff all the time. So that's pretty really cool. We have lunch and learns to learn about different departments. Um, but it's like working at Santa's workshop for sure. Pretty awesome. Um, sure. Especially with all like, the figures. Oh, we also have massage therapists come in. Uh, every uh, two, two days a week, and it's you know it's going to hopefully be every day. So you can just you know feel and stiff, and just walk down and go get a twenty minute massage. No big deal. That sounds amazing. Yeah, we need that. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite part. <laughs> um, we also get five thousand dollars a year to do some massage and chiropractic. Um, everybody, so we, we can get like a full hour massage every single week without ever having to pay a time for the entire year. You see you are Oh my if god. If that's not a reason to come to like, I don't know. It oh <laughs> like it was appealing, but now it's like 20 times more appealing. Yeah. Right? And, and hey, if I ever give you guys an offer and I go into this about the massage, just pretend you don't know and be really excited because that's my <laughs> Um, but, God, I guess the, the coolest thing about Leica as an employee and, and coming in as a junior is that you, we, we do these, like, um, tours throughout all the departments to introduce you to where you are in the pipeline, you know, what, what's coming before you and what's going after you, and also to let you guys know, um, other parts of the pipeline that you may not even know exist and if you're interested we can put together a career path for you to get to that spot so you might start it as a character designer or a visual development artist but you like working with your hands and you'd rather be sculpting or making little models um, we meet with people all the time and, and help them put together their portfolio to get to that spot so um Sometimes, yeah, things, little things, new departments can inspire people to go in different directions, which is really cool. Um, and we like to foster that, for sure. Um, for character designers and visual development artists, um, story artists, anything to do with drawing, really, and concept, um, I do want to just let you know we have, we don't hire a lot for those, so if you do see one come up, try to be the first one <laughs> to, to apply because we'll get like 500 overnight. Um, and of course I can't interview all 500 people. Um, we'll go through like the first 100 and maybe 30 will be decent um, or like fit that style that we're looking for for the next film. Um, <clears throat> And then out of those 30, you know, we'll probably narrow it down to about 10 for a phone screen and then maybe three to go forward with full-on interviews. So um, that's how that works. So if you don't get a response, um, you, you know, it's not because you're not good. It's just because the sheer volume of the people that we get. Um, and just try again, you know, try and try again. And also if... Um, your your stuff may not be the right vision or color palette or style or whatever for the film. 
that we're looking at. Um, so in the future, so you know, you never know that next film, film seven, could be that perfect style for you because if you've seen all of our movies, they change dramatically with shapes and colors and palettes and lines and uh, characters. So um, yeah, it's so subjective and really, really hard uh, to place people. But versatility is, is, is always looked at as a plus. Um, if you can do, I guess, the, you know, I think a lot, I see a lot of concept artists that do like, like the space, you know, kind of game centric dark worlds and things like that. If you can go from that to doing like a beautiful landscape in a cornfield, you know, or, um, different kinds of characters. Uh, you don't want to pigeonhole yourself into the game look or the Disney look or, um, you know, something that's derivative of, of some studio because every studio has its own style. And so if we see a certain style that's more Disney or Pixar, then um, it doesn't really fit with the characters that we have. So you have to look at the studio that you're applying to and, and maybe tailor your portfolio towards that studio. Does that make sense? Yeah, perfect yeah. sense. So Any other questions? If you were to list the... If, let's say you're there's a student or just a general person who wants to apply to Leica as an artist, what would be the <laughs> top five things you say they should have under the belt when applying to like look as best as possible to a recruiter. It's hard to answer because it's so different among um, the different departments. Mm -hmm. Number one is website. Um, if you are an artist and you have character designs and uh, <laughs> like scenes that you want to show. Um, the website is, is the most important. And which website you use? Behance? No, 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 no. Oh. Really? <laughs> because it's so hard to pick through. If you think about, I have a thousand applications to look through, and I'm looking for a visual development artist. Usually when I'm clicking on Behance, there's animation little box, and then there's, you know, concept and there's character and there's all these little sections that you have to click through and read that, read that tiny script underneath whatever it is and the kinds of things that we're looking for for this particular very specific position and so I just don't like it's so hard to you know scroll through all of those to find the right characters or photos that I'm looking for um, if you have a a website like Wix or something, really easy to navigate. There's buttons like this is my visual development stuff, this is my character design, this is my animation. I can click on character design because that's what I'm looking for and that should be all the stuff that I need to see. I'm not going to click through your animation or your other stuff because I'm looking specifically for something. Um, and I have to look at thousands of those. So I can tell pretty quickly. Um, the moment I click on someone's like web page, I can tell by how you have which colors you've chosen for your home page. Um, if you design a little, you know, um, emoji or or avatar for yourself, I can tell what style you have. Um, and if it's like all pinks and greens and yellows and stuff like that, and I'm looking for maybe a dark character artist. I'm probably going to skip it. Um, but that first homepage really tells me a lot about your style and uh, the kind of artist you are. So that's really important. And unfortunately, it just, it's just that way. You have to be really judgmental very quickly. <laughs> um, so I think that's the number one. Um, I don't really read cover letters. Um, Unless you're, you know, applying for an HR position or something like production assistant, you know, coordinator that really has to work with people and 
you know, you have to actually draft nice emails and stuff. I, I don't really care about your cover letter. Um, it's not to say that it's not a great thing to have. And if, if you are going to do a cover letter here, please refer to the job description. Um, don't make it a general cover letter. Let us know that you've actually read the job description. That is so flipping important. I can't tell you how many people apply across the board without reading like what the years of experience are supposed to be, what kind of softwares you're supposed to know, um, what kind of characters or design, whatever it is, they will be specific in there. And if you're applying and you don't meet that criteria, then you're just wasting my time and your own time, of course. Um, but if you can say, hey, I read the job description and you asked for this and this is how I need it. You asked for this, this is how I need it. That is like, it's like, I just want to like sing and dance when I see people that actually take the time to do that. It really, really stands out. Um, that being said, have your people read your character so that you don't have a bunch of mistakes. That people that spell like a wrong all the time. <laughs> send me things like, I would love to work for Disney. It's like, great! <laughs> you do that. <laughs> um, so yeah, just make sure that you, you know, you have somebody edit it. Um, PDF portfolios, I, I highly discourage only because we have to share um, your work with multiple hiring managers and because the security of our mail system, internal mail system, we can't send large um, files. So it just makes it super hard for me to have to like download, you know, or put it into a different temp folder for them. Um, and it just takes a lot of time for us. So please, yeah, have a link of something. Do not use Instagram for your portfolio. Do not use Facebook for your portfolio. There's too many comments, too many, you know, things to scroll through. We're looking for your work, not what people think of your work or how many likes you got. Um, <laughs> we want to see a professional website um, to show your stuff. Um, one of the tips I got from the visual development lead, specifically when you're doing like landscapes or you're doing like, <clears throat> you know, a person that's in the foreground, um, he really looks for depth, understand, under, the understanding of depth and um, how things diminish um, in you know, far distance, and also that you're paying attention to what is in the far distance, so it just doesn't, like, go into a skyline, like, um, if there's little trees or fog way, way back there, or if there's a tiny little steeple that, you know, is barely being shown in the background, it shows that you have, you understand the entire world, um, and that if somebody was going to walk into that world, it continues, and it doesn't just end. So that's something that he was looking for the last time we had to return. Any other questions? Okay, let's skip ahead after the um, application phase and let's say somebody is sitting down at an interview. Do you have any interview tips that you'd like to share that would be good for us to know for our future? Yes. yes. <laughs> um, don't always expect that the hiring managers are great interviews. Because not, not all of them are, you know. Sometimes they're nervous and they don't know what questions to ask. Um, so make sure that you come prepared. One, you've done your research on Leica. Why do you want to work at Leica and not Disney and not Pixar and not NBC or anywhere else, you know? We need to come because there's a lot of people trying to get hired here. And um, we want people that want to work here, you know, that it's not just, oh, it's a cool, shiny place that I've heard of, but that you're really passionate about the stop motion animation. Um, research will you, always tell you who you're going to be meeting with. Look them up on LinkedIn. Um, see if you have anything in common. You might both play soccer, you might both be into Star Wars, you might both be into Legos, we have a lot of those people there. <laughs> like, um, 
you might have been in the same fraternity or sorority, you know. So um, always that's a great thing to, to bring up. It really surprises people, and, and it definitely means a stamp. Um, and have and questions, questions prepared. prepared. Like, like, what is this that, that shows that you really care, care that this is the right job for you? What's the, the culture, culture like, like here? here. Um, where, you know, how long have you been here? And have you moved up to, you know, the ranks? Right, right. <laughs> you know, what, what, uh, uh, ask, uh, ask about the about kinds of tools or, or uh, software that they use. And, um, yeah, yeah, just be, just be really, really inquisitive about, about the position. position. Right now, the job description before your interview. And, and have that on hand and say, well, you say they preferred. Um, um, why is it preferred? And is there anything that I may have that, that's equal to that or transferable? You can speak to, well, I don't have three years, I have two years. You know, I'm, I feel very confident with the blah, 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 blah. Um, so you can look at email to refer to the job as an But I think that's who this part Okay. Are there any interview or anything that you sh we should be aware of to not do when it comes to application and interviews? Do not do ask, ask about salary in your interview. Phone screen, I will do that. I will tell you if your salary is way out of whack or if you are, you know, if your expectations are too high for the role. Um, I know that happens a lot because you guys just don't know what the industry is, so don't be scared to pick whatever, you can even put negotiable, you know, um, and we'll let you know what the, what the range is. Um, sometimes they're just set rates. EA is $14 an hour, you know, an intern is $12. So we'll, we'll let you know what we're expecting. Um, <clears throat> And don't, don't use the foot in the door talk. talk. The main the thing is we want, want someone that knows what they want to do, that has a, a clear um, understanding, understanding of the types of artists they are and where their level is and how long it's going to take to get where they need to go. So people that come in expecting to you know, be a full-on animator right away that's a pipe right? Like, like, you, there's, 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 there's a, there's a, a definite, definite uh, learning curve, curve that you have. Um, um, and if you're, you're you know, applying for the visual, visual development, development stuff because stuff, you've got great visual, visual development work, but you really want to be a character artist, artist um, you know, you know, let them let know. Them know. Um, um, really upfront. But, be honest, be honest, you know, you know don't say, oh, this is like my dream job if you really want to be somewhere else. Because eventually, six months into it, that's going to show, and you're going to feel it. Okay. Now, my next question would be location. How much does, the, how important does location matter when it comes to applying to a creative studio? Would you prefer that they be in the same um, city slash state? Or can somebody from a different coast apply and still have yeah, a yeah. good all here. Here. <laughs> here. Makes it so much easier. <laughs> okay. Um, that's a, it's a hard, hard question. question. I mean, certain, <laughs> certain positions are really hard to fill. When you're looking for that very specific 2D animator or visual development artist or concept artist, it's, it's such a hunt because it's, you know, the director has the style in their head and like, you, you literally scour the earth, right? And so it doesn't really matter where you are. If you meet that criteria, you're hired. Um, for really entry level positions, like, you know, um, a PA or a 2D artist, um, that we can find locally, we prefer to do that because it's scary for us to bring you guys out to a new city on your own if you don't know anybody, finding you know your own housing and, and taking that risk because usually junior positions don't pay that much. Um, and so it's a risk for us because if it doesn't work out, we feel horrible, you know, like this person moved here for this. and. And sometimes it doesn't work out, you know, sometimes that style is not hit, sometimes it's just a difference of, of 
thought they were getting it. They were getting it. They did. So we do like to hire locally, but that's not always possible, and we will definitely hire from all over the country. That's good to know. Even like across um, different countries too. Well, that would be definitely harder, I assume. We do. We hire all over the world. We need quite a diverse, diverse community in that way, which is really cool. cool. Uh, Some people will really have to get English to your store, you know. Um, oh. So, yeah. They're all over the world. <laughs> awesome. And that um, one of the things you said made me think of an interesting question. They always say that your connections are one of the strongest things you could have as an artist when applying to creative studios. Could you vouch for that? I see that's a yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> In both ways. I mean, I have, I have you know, our first, first, our first, our first, first like, like um, I guess, I guess field, field that we move into we're recruiting for our positions is to ask, ask people, people that do that, that right, right here. here. Because obviously they're, they're hired, hired they're working, they're great. They're great. And they were, you know, yeah, you know we, we go to like the other feather, you know, kind yeah, of thing. thing. So, so if, if, they're if they're great artists, we trust, trust them to um, send us great people, people because, because they know what it takes. So if you are friends with anybody here, that's a great start. Or anywhere in the industry. It is a small small and um, your reputation follows you. Um, I have a question, like, going back to the interview and, like, portfolio type of things. So, other than, like, having really, really good artistic skills, what other things, like, do you look for other than, like, skill and uh, portfolio? Soft skills, skills are great. Are great. Um, I mentioned it was a major, major family here. here. Mm -hmm. um, you can be the best, best artist, artist in the world, but if they're a terrible ass, ass, we know. We know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, 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 your your stuff stinks just as much as somebody else's, and we leave those at the door. So, we want this to be a environment that fosters creativity, positivity, we don't have time to drop them. So, so, not that it doesn't exist, exist because it does, exist. Exist. Um, but we, we try, try to try to that down as much. So, um, personality, yeah, being outgoing, being able to talk to other, to other people, people. Um, um, collaboration. collaboration. You know, you know, a lot of students, students have a really hard time, time coming out of school, school and, and working for someone, someone else, else and working on someone else's vision, vision and not being able to. You know, you know, do their own thing with it. Mm -hmm. um, um, they have a really hard time with the critique of that. that. So, so know that when you are doing it, that it is a collaboration. You'll never be doing everything. everything. You're just, you're just you're a, a tiny piece, piece of that concept, a tiny piece of that character. And other things are going to be heard. And take it as a learning tool, you know. So don't be a person. Thank you. And one last question before I open up the floor to Q&A for everybody. So you've explained how you, as a recruiter, go and, and what you look for to find us artists. But what can we do to find you guys? What do you recommend for people actually on the job hunt and looking for places like Leica or any sort of creative studio to work at? Um, LinkedIn, number one. <laughs> I have about 15,000 connections on LinkedIn since I've become a recruiter. I use that for pretty much every single job, no matter what it is. Puppet fab, air fabricator, concept artist, comp analyst. I use LinkedIn like nobody's business. And please use that up. You can even put under um, your name on your LinkedIn page a headline that says, Available 2018 or available 2019 for concept art or biz dev or whatever. Follow the companies that you like on LinkedIn um, and make sure that you have a little button pushed on LinkedIn that says open for opportunities. And why that's so important is because when I'm looking for a concept artist or biz dev artist, I type in those keywords and it'll pull up everybody in the world, right? And I narrow it down to, 
okay, only in the U.S. because it's a junior and we don't want to do a visa for a junior. Okay, now um, I want somebody that is open to opportunities. There's like a little tab there that I can click on, and that goes from like 20,000 people to like 200 people. Um, and then I there's another tab that says people that follow you. So that now is that down to about 10 or 15 people that are not only fans of ours and really know like and follow like us, but also are over the opportunities. That's the list that goes to the first. So that's huge. Um, the other thing is, you know, follow our, our Facebook pages, our Twitter, um, Make comments. Make comments. I look at I comments sometimes. I post jobs all the time on my own personal LinkedIn. And then, like, like, that's how Moody really got his job. job. He, he saw that I posted like, the animation like, TV and he, he asked about it in the comment. I saw his comment. I was like, oh my God! Like, <laughs> so, you know, he reached out and he, he kept tabs on what was going on. And sure enough, it worked. So, um, you can, you, can, you can add to you like, like add me on LinkedIn, email me your stuff. stuff. Um, uh, even if there's not a position open, open send, send like an email to the recruiters in any studio and say, hey, hey, I know there's nothing open right now, but I just wanted you to have my portfolio. You never know. They, they could know about something opening up a week from now that you have to So just never give up. Just keep don't stop us. <laughs> <laughs> you can email us like once every couple months and just say, hey, I just want you to know I'm still here, you know? Or this is an update to my portfolio, or I just finished my thesis, and this is what it looks like. You know, keep me in mind, right? We don't mind that at all. We love that. Okay. Less work for me, because you're just coming. <laughs> Are there any like in person um ways people can like hunt down recruiters and jobs? Like go to going to like events or conventions or et cetera? Or just um, visiting? Sigraph? Sigraph. <laughs> I'm going to CTN next month. Um those those, those events, events are really important because really you do get to meet face to face with recruiters, recruiters and I can't tell you how much of an impact that is. is. Um, for um, us remembering people, because we talked to thousands, talk to thousands of people, people like, like thousands, thousands of people. people. Um, so, so that, that it does make an impact. Um, I say don't go to the studio. That's a little too much. <laughs> but asking for coffee over here is not a bad thing. I, you know, you, know, you can, can find them on LinkedIn, LinkedIn. Uh, if, uh, they're if they're smart, smart you can figure out, like, like, what the email is for the studio. studio. Like, um, ours is always first, first letter, letter, last name, and like a dot com. com. So, if so you can you figure out that pattern, it might work for you. It's a little stocking Or Or find their, like, we have a recording at like a dot com email, and we read every single one of them. So, if so another studio has that, that, use it. Use it. Um, I've found a lot of talent from people just reaching out and saying, hey, I applied and I didn't hear anything, or I saw that it was taken down. Um, I just want you to have my stuff on file for another position. And it works. It really does. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you for that answer. And with that, I'm going to open up the floor. If anybody here has a question, hey, Jack, come on in. <laughs> Hey, so I'm glad you mentioned Seagraph. Um, so I actually just came back from Seagraph. Uh, I talked to a lot of recruiters there, and I feel like I got a really po a lot of really good positive responses. But then, like naturally, after I send off a dozen applications, two dozen applications, I have not heard anything back. Should I assume that when I hear positive things from recruiters at a fair, that it is a genuine reflection of my portfolio, or that you're usually trying to get a lot of names. Like, should I take that as I should work on my shelf for the same applications? <laughs> but a recruiter, it's a really like it's so hard for a recruiter mm -hmm. to give like critical feedback. I've made so many people cry just by trying to just say this is just not like our style. I mean, I'm. It's not that it's bad. It's just like. 
we're looking for this and this is not what the, it is. So I don't like making people cry. <laughs> um, I think some recruiters probably are just nice, it, you know, um, and it's an easier way to just say, oh, that's great, you know, rather than getting really down into the dirt because I know recruiters of those things, they get inundated with so many people, right? Um, if you're applying, that's probably not an issue um, that, you know, they were lying to you or anything. Just like I said, we get like a thousand applicants if we put out, you know, a concept or two. So we go through the first 50 to 100, and if you were 101, probably you're not going to get looked at. We'll probably end up hiring somebody before we have to look at that next several hundred. So unfortunately, it's a numbers game. Um, and who, who's in first? <laughs> okay, no, that's perfectly fine. Uh, the other question I had, um, I have a lot of programmer friends who they'll see a position for like senior programmer or senior app developer, and they'll apply to it straight out of college, um, and they'll have like two months of experience for something that they need five years of experience for, and they'll get the job. And so they keep saying, oh, no, apply to all these senior positions, even though... Wait, what? Yeah. They'll get the job? Yep, <laughs> they will. Yeah, exactly. And um, so... Uh, from a from our perspective, right? When you ask for like a senior person, I I assume you mean you want somebody who has had like shift this title, this title, this title, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we we vet our job descriptions every single time before putting them up, and we make sure that they are scoured through, and that we we are looking for exactly that person. So we don't want to waste anyone else's time. We don't want to get people excited, you know. Um, and it has a lot to do with rate too. So if, you know, we're, we're looking for a junior technical director and you're super senior and you're applying, it's like, no, we're not going to up the budget because you bring all this experience. We are looking for a junior person that they can grow. Um, and same with senior, I think, but Hey, I have to say, for example, Moody, you know, he blew them all away. He was just technically super competent. Um, answer all the questions correctly. We could have hired somebody that was a little more senior, but they have a total faith in him and how just excited he was. Um, and so they did bring it down a little bit uh, just to get him in um, as far as experience goes. So it's worth a try. I mean, I, I'll, I'll tell you every single time, I look at every single application, um, even after people are hired, because I go through them again. Sometimes, and I, we have this little thing in our applicant tracking system, if you apply for something and you're not qualified for it, but I like your resume, I will tag you like, oh, this person could be a data wrangler, which is like, you know, down the, the steps instead of a senior person. Um, or this person could be a great stage tech or whatever. Um, and so when I'm looking for a stage tech next time, your resume will pop up. You may be um, much more senior by then. <laughs> and... I'll also be employed, but we'll reach out to you and say, hey, I know you applied for this way back when. Are you interested in this position that you're more qualified for? So we do that a lot. Thank you. Uh, I have one final question, and it's related to how experience translates. Um, I've worked freelance for a number of years. Um, however, in working freelance, sometimes I'll do like one year where I just did almost exclusively video, even though most of the time I'm trying to say get CG jobs. Um, how does freelance experience translate in sort of real world studio numbers to the, the amount of years that you might be looking for of studio experience? We actually add them up. Um, so for people that do freelance, be very specific in your resumes. Like I did, you know, you can't just say in 2018, I, I worked on this. Well, you didn't work on it the whole year, you know, because freelance is usually like two weeks, sometimes two days, sometimes three hours, you know. So you you have to be very specific of how long you worked on the project. And we'll go through your resume and add up that time and do an estimated amount of, well, they have about a year of experience over the last few years or six months or whatever. So we add that up. Um, but if you're, you know, if you're doing a bunch of video media stuff and you're applying for a CG animation position, that video media stuff is not going to count um, because it's just not the same thing. So 
you have to you have to be in something very transferable, very simple. All right, I think that's everything. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hi. 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 Um, so I just wanted to ask about the internships a little bit. Um, are they going to be more like general internships or do you get to maybe like pick a section and like really focus on like one aspect? Like I'm interested in like sculpting and like puppet making and site construction. So like would I be able to work with them specifically the whole time or would you like get a full view of? all the different aspects. I mean, both are really cool. I just was curious. Um, <laughs> so every, probably, probably like in the beginning of the year, year, year like, probably around February, February we surveyed all, all the departments, departments and asked ask what new they need, need, how many they want, want uh, and then they have to go through the budget approval to make sure that they're there to bring up the same Once we get to the final approval, that's pretty much the internet that we'll have. So, you know, we don't always have to be a VFX department. We don't always have to have a space for RP or RP. Oh, okay. It depends on where we are in production and how busy they are, how much help they need, or whatever. So, yeah, that's it. It sounds like, like set construction is in the art department. Art. So, so um, um, if, if we usually do general, general internships with the art department, because the art department's huge, they've seen the landscape, they've been bottoming, and everything. everything. Yeah. Um, um, those those, those interns usually do get to yeah, kind of like, like, like poke around with different, different parts of the art department. But usually they have a very specific thing that they were chosen for. They're really, really model makers. Perhaps, Perhaps, you know, they'll, they'll probably be focused on a lot of money. Okay. Uh, puppets, puppets, we usually have very, very specific interests. So we'll do like an armature shirt or a Yeah, there's so many different parts. Yeah. So they will be specific, but, but okay. you can, you can ask, ask to kind of run around, around such a short, short time period to, to get, get good enough, enough to get that traineeship. Yeah. That you really do want to focus. Okay. Um, and for the, to acquire internships, um, is there going to be like one deadline that you guys have, or do you put post them as they like appear? Kind of. We'll post them all of them at once. Usually around, around March, March. I want to say. March. Julie March. March. Um, um, and we'll put some, some like updates, updates on our website saying, you know, internships to be posted soon. And we'll have, have very, very specific instructions on what the deadline is. Usually it's like, like 6 p.m. on a Friday. Okay. We don't accept that. We shut that down and we don't accept anything after that. I can't tell you how you can eat. Now they have some kind of technical glitch. 6 p.m. in the last day. Well, you should have gotten it in or tried, like, the day before. Prepare, you guys. Don't Also, just, I, you were talking about junior positions and kind of how you try to get people that you can train and um, that will grow so that you have them move up to senior positions from within. Um, what kind of experience do you look for for junior positions, like people entering? So, internships, internships are different, are different right? right? So, interns, we yeah. know, are still in school or just graduating, and we hope to, to bring them on as a trainee and train them for six months, and then they go into a junior position. Juniors, um, you have to have some kind of production experience um, or just be an outstanding graduate. I mean, sometimes that happens where we see someone that just has insane skills and will bring them on as a junior. Um, my main, my main tip to you guys is I know when I was talking to a lot of schools that if you're studying animation or certain things, they'll have you do a little bit of everything. And usually like the end film, you have to do it all. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if that's, is that you guys, do you guys have a great part of it? No? It's collaborative? Within a different class, it depends. Like the animation class, you make your own independent film by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so it depends on the class. Um, 
for our animation <laughs> class, hi. <laughs> for our animation class, we have to, uh, the students make an independent film by themselves, like their own student film, but certain classes will have topics classes where students will collaborate on a full, uh, larger scale project. That's awesome. Um, okay. Yeah. Because um, you'll, you'll never in real life do everything. No, yeah, yeah come from yeah. And, 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 and I mean, we have people that do the hands yeah. and the hair yeah. and the head yeah. and the yeah. eyes, yeah. you know, yeah. so. so um, You'll never, ever, ever do everything. <laughs> so I, basically, my point is, don't don't try to be a generalist. Um, you're competing with 2,500 other candidates uh, as an intern or even as a junior um, to get in. And so you want to be really, 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 really good at one thing and that one thing that you're applying for. Um, you, you don't want to be just, like, good or okay at everything. You have to be... The best, the best at one thing. thing. So, so, you know, edit, edit yourself. yourself. Be very self-assessing. Self -assessing. Like, like, know your, your strengths. strengths. Um, um, and, and I hate to I say this, but if your strengths are actually, actually not your passion, passion which usually, usually isn't, isn't the, 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 like, the, the, what happens, what happens. Ask, your ask your friends, friends you know, you know to look at your portfolio and tell, tell you what your best aspects are of your portfolio. Most of the time, it'll be the thing that you're passionate about. But if, but if for some, some reason, reason that one thing, thing that you're so good at isn't, isn't your passion, passion use it to get in the door. <laughs> you know, like, like do that do job that for a little while, while and then you have, have once you're in, in once you've completed a project in that job you were hired for, you you were able to move to different departments. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I think that's all I have for today, question wise. Um yeah. Okay, so thank you so much for answering all those. That was really yeah, cool. yeah. Anyone else? Anyone else? Um, yeah, come on. Let's go. Oh, yeah. You go first. Okay. Yeah. I'm the only shit. static one. <laughs> <I'm writing. laughs> You're the last one standing. You've won the. You've won the game. When you said uh, about the portfolio stuff and you said like don't pigeonhole yourself into like uh having like into into like sticking to like one style and um stuff like that but i have also heard that like when making a portfolio it's good to have like at least some consistency so like is so like where so is it better to have something that's like um like one extreme or the other one extreme or the other or like going for something a bit more like um, a happy medium. I think everyone has, you know, as character designers or whatever, they have their own voice, they have their own style, and I think it's really important to do that over and over again. Like, if, if your characters are a certain kind of character, then, um, then do a lot of them, you know? But you also have to um, create characters that are out of your character, though, um, and put those in your portfolio to show that you can actually do somebody else's work. Um, um, or somebody, somebody else's kind of, kind of style. style. Does that make that sense? Makes sense? Yeah. So you, you can know, have a tab of your personal stuff. stuff. You can have a tab of, you know, you know things that, that you've taken take from Disney or, or other, other, you know, whatever. The Mideast 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 I don't know. Mideast um, Mideast but you can, you can try to show that you can pretty much do any style. I just get a lot of these portfolios that are... All, all the same the color same palette, palette, all the all same, same lines, lines, all the same, same kinds of characters, characters, all the same, you know, eyes, and eyes and noses, and, and smiles, smiles, and it's just, it's just it doesn't matter if you paint them black, black or gray or, gray or yellow, yellow they, they, all they all look the same. same. So, so yeah. like, would you say that, like, showing that, showing versatility is more important? Yes. Yes. Okay. For sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Anybody else? Anybody else? Morgan, it's your turn. Morgan, it's your turn. Yes! You can have the chair this time. Yeah, right? Hi! Calm down! Okay. Um, hi, thank you so much for talking with us again. Um, uh, I just wanted to ask, we kind of briefly mentioned, you said things not to mention in your interview, like things not to ask, but have there been any specific questions or discussions you've had with potential applicants or people that were looking to be hired that really stand out to you or things that are really good questions to ask that you could recommend uh, that help a 
someone who's trying to apply stand out a little bit more? Um, um, I would say I practice, practice your practice interviews <laughs> with people. <laughs> practice walking up to people randomly. I mean, it really does help, you know, because if you're super nervous in the interview, unfortunately, that's going to come across. And sometimes... And sometimes it can hurt you. Um, so practice with people. Being able to answer questions. Um, to be able to explain your work. And why your work is your work. You know? How'd you come up with it? What's your style? Um, how'd you learn how to do this? Just get really comfortable explaining. Um, and being proud of your work. And um, it'll come through. Confidence is, is really something that, that, that shines, shines through, through and makes everybody comfortable, right? But if you're a super nervous person and an introvert, it's not going to kill you. We've had a bunch of people that have come through that can barely speak a word, but their work spoke for themselves, you know? Um, yeah, I used to practice. That's, and that you've done your research, you know? You know why you like it. Like I think that's the main thing, is that you come prepared completely. Awesome. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Chair of Health? It's empty. <laughs> Who's the next contestant on Leica is right? <laughs> I just wanted to say I sent you a LinkedIn request. I hope that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll be pretty easy to uh, recognize. <laughs> we all good? Any more questions? Well, I think I'll close it off with the last question. Um, so throughout this entire um, talk, I'll just say, you've explained what Leica is looking for. And Leica is very highbrow, very like high-end um, film and animation studio. Do you have any tips for um, people who want to apply to different categories of creative studios, such as maybe smaller indie movie studios or game studios? Um, we know your experience and job is with Leica, but if you have anything you would like to share about any other sort of industries or levels, branches in the industry, that do you have any? I do. I think I, that's an amazing question. I'm so glad you asked it because um, I think it's really important. I didn't end up at Leica as a recruiter um, for my first job. I put in seven or eight years before at, at Linky Bank places. <laughs> Before I had enough experience to be a recruiter at Leica, you know. So if you don't get your first job at a place like Pixar or Disney, I'm, I'm, it's okay. You can get there someday. Just don't get defeated if uh, you have to go through a couple of other smaller studios first. And there's a lot of smaller studios depending on what you want. Um, Reese, if you want to be in stop motion animation, there's Bent, Image Labs, How Special, Shadow Machine. Starburst. Um, there's so many out there. There's some in Atlanta. Um, they're smaller, and usually they're great um, starters because the smaller studios, one, usually don't have a recruiter, so reach out to the supervisors, um, or the production managers, or the producers. Because smaller yeah, studios don't have a quarter, so that's, that's number one. one. Uh, connect with them on LinkedIn, LinkedIn and reach out to them. Uh, they're usually the hiring. hiring. They're the ones that do the hires. And then um, it'll give you so much more experience because they usually have to have you as a generalist. Because you wear, you know, you can hire it as one thing, but you have to wear so many hats because they're really smaller. So it's a really great way to grab And yeah, yeah. Um, just be careful about about getting into games um, versus getting into like TV, CG, and film CG. Games can pigeonhole you, and less for like technical jobs like Python people and all that stuff. They're okay, but when it comes to animation or modeling. Um, those kinds of things, it's, it's really hard to get out of games. Um, it's really hard to, to move into animation, um, CG, or, or BFX. Or even concepts, because it's just a totally different world and totally different stuff. So be, just be conscious of the, the, the jobs you pick, because everything is supposed to build to where you want to go. So we'll take something just because you're desperate, which I know money is important. 
but be, be very cautious. Okay. Well, that's all I have. That's all we have. And so, let's just end it off. Thank you so much, Angela, for talking with Thank us. You. I'm sure everyone here has learned a ton. Let's all oh, give yeah. her a round of applause. Bye. Len, send me your resume. Uh, okay. <laughs> Look at that resume. Okay. You all can send me your resume. Yeah! <laughs> Hire concept class. Hire us all at once. Okay, and before we end this call, are there any closing remarks that you'd like to give? I love you. Yeah. Aww. I love you. We love you. Yeah. Me too. Do you have, do you have <laughs> any more questions for like us? And know uh, we just kind of threw a bunch at you, but like other than like what are we? Like, do you have any other things that you're curious about? Um. Yeah, I guess. How many people are are technical at all? Like, do. No, is everybody just really concept, visual development? You do model, right? Yeah, I, I'm a modeler. modeler. Yeah. So, uh, Jack. I've delved into it a little yeah. bit. Modeler. Modeler. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, they're actually trying to, like, um, in, in our major, they're actually starting to change the program a little to, like, kind of, like, gear a lot of the newer uh, incoming students to get grab more technical skills alongside building their like conceptual skills so it's a it's pretty okay. cool for um for concept and visual development do you guys do everything on pen and paper or do you guys do anything in software um we actually we actually do have classes geared towards teaching digital painting and digital drawing. Um, it's like about like a 50-50 that people will work traditionally and people will work digitally. But in, in my classes, like personal experience, I've seen a lot of people start like working mostly exclusively digitally. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. Cool. Um, um, I'm just, I'm, I guess it's hard for me to ask questions when I haven't seen anybody's work because it's just, there's so, so many different styles out there. <laughs> but um, no, I'm excited. I mean, just I want to thank you, Lens, because you know we never we never would have been talking to VCU. It wasn't for you. So this is this is pretty cool. We, we're constantly looking for new new talented people and new talented groups. So this is great. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Oh. We actually, uh, from Bets back there, actually just reminded me, we, uh, the Call Arts is actually having a senior show in um, May, I believe it's, uh, it's going to be May 3rd, and we're actually, we'll probably send you an email about this um, later on, but we're actually starting to look for studios and like recruiters and people of those sorts to come and visit the show on the day, because uh, it's going to be the, our senior class kind of like displaying work and then later in the day selling their work as like prints and like charms and stickers. But in the morning, it's like a portfolio day. Just being like, Where's the heck? <laughs> 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 um, yeah, no, I'm glad that you brought that up because we usually make a uh, annual budget for our travel and which uh, studios we're going to be uh, visiting. Um, I have done an East Coast tour before, so I can't say that's out of the question. Um, so yeah, get any information as soon as you possibly can. Richmond, Virginia. Just remember that. <laughs> I used to live in Maryland, so I was your neighbor. Is it your old stomping grounds on the way? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. I was a flight attendant then, so I didn't actually hang out much in Maryland, but oh, I have my 21st birthday in D.C. Oh, oh, God. Really memorable. Oh, man. D.C.'s wild. Oh, my God. I have stories. Oh, oh my God. Well, let's uh, cut it off here. Angela, thank you again so much for all you've done. Thank you Thank so much you. for all the information, and we hope you have a great rest of your evening, and best of luck with everything you want to do and try to do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Add me on LinkedIn, Angela Geyer. Uh, you can find me. So I look forward to seeing all your work. Thanks so much, guys. No problem. Thank Take care. Bye. Bye.